Hi, Josh Lampert here, and I'm just talking a little bit about breast surgery. In our practice in Miami, Florida, we see a lot of problems with breast implants, a lot of breast revision surgery. Patients have a lot of questions, and it always helps to kind of go back to the original anatomy of the breast. What are we looking at? So when we look at a normal breast over here, and I'm gonna to go to my um, pointer, which is a liposuction cannula, um, we can see that um, the nipple, which a lot of patients ask about, is the very end uh, of the breast mound, and it's where the child latches onto for breastfeeding. And then the area around the nipple, that area of pigment around the nipple is the areola. So a lot of times patients will say, with surgery, can you make my nipple smaller or larger? And um, that's always the question, are we talking about the nipple or the diameter of pigmentation around the areola? And we look at the unoperated breast, okay? We have the chest wall, which is made up of ribs and muscle. Overlying that chest wall, here's our clavicle, here's each one of our ribs. Overlying that is our pectoralis major muscle and our pectoralis minor muscle. These are important muscles for the bodybuilders that are trying to build up their chest in the gym. Above this and above the fascia of the muscle, we have what we call the breast parenchyma or the breast gland. And the breast parenchyma is basically a series of ducts which get bigger and bigger and bigger until they lead to the base duct, which is the nipple. And that's where all the milk gets funneled into. And that's why a lot of times when patients have had a prior breast surgery, specifically a scar around the nipple areolar complex, so if the breast implant was placed here or they've had a breast lift, more of these structures get cut. And when more of these structures get cut, the chances of being able to breastfeed in the future goes down significantly. So for instance, when a breast implant is placed from the fold down here, a lot of those structures get avoided. So you can put that implant in and not injure these structures as much. But when the breast implant is placed through the nipple areolar complex, the risk of injuring those structures is higher. And then if an implant is placed with the breast lift, a lot of times the patient can't breastfeed. Also, more nerves are injured when you go around the nipple areolar complex. So that's also a higher risk that patients will have lost sensation to the nipple areolar complex. Another really important structure is this breast fold. The breast fold is almost like a ligament that separates the breast from the abdominal skin. So this is something that we're usually trying to preserve and not change the position of unless the patient has a very severe asymmetry or we're doing breast cancer reconstruction. Sometimes when we're doing breast implant revision though, this structure has been violated or it's been released and it makes surgery much more difficult and we'll go into that a little bit later. The other thing I always like to go over with patients is the blood supply to the nipple because any revision surgery, any breast lift, any breast reduction, there's always a chance um, that you'll read in the, in, in the informed consent from the American Society of Plastic Surgery and it's in every textbook that there's a risk you could injure the blood supply of the nipple and the biggest thing that we worry about is nipple loss when something like that happens. Fortunately, in my practice, I've never lost a nipple and I'm not getting on the wood cabinet over here because I know good surgeons who have, but we have to be very careful of the blood supply, specifically when the patients had multiple prior surgeries. So the unoperated breast has a lot of blood vessels that come through from the chest wall to the nipple. You know, here we've kind of labeled them, the second branch of the internal mammary artery, the fourth branch of the internal mammary artery. But all these major branches that go to the nipple basically get cut when you put the implant in. So that major blood supply coming from the chest wall gets disrupted. So what you start relying more upon is the superficial blood supply that travels through the skin and the more superficial tissues. So if we put a breast implant right here, we might preserve the fifth superficial branch of the internal mammary artery that goes to the nipple, but we may not preserve the second branch. The other vessel that's very important with breast implant surgery is the thoracochromial artery off the subclavian artery, which we frequently see when we go under the muscle. So when patients are doing revision surgery, sometimes patients want to replace breast implants or remove their implants. This is an important vessel not to injure. Well, number one, because it bleeds and makes a mess in the operating room. Um, and number two, next to it is a very large vessel called the subclavian artery. And I've even heard of uh, patients with other surgeons having injuries to the subclavian artery. 
which is very important because it gives you blood supply to your hand and arm. So that's why it's very important when you're doing any revision breast surgery, specifically when the implant's under the muscle, to see an experienced plastic surgeon. These little diagrams demonstrate a little bit of implant position placement. So when we look at when patients are above the muscle, uh, implant patients or below the muscle, we see a lot of patients who've had implants that were above and then they had a second surgery below. Um, you know, in, in our practice here in Miami, there's a lot of patients with breast implants. So we see a lot of patients who've had multiple operations. Some patients are in their 20s and have had six operations. So you need to start really thinking about what happened. It's good to get the operative record, but in general, the pectoralis major muscle is the muscle we're talking about when we say under or above the muscle. And usually that muscle, although it goes kind of all the way down under the breast before surgery, it gets released and the muscle frequently slides up like a window shade. Sometimes we'll see patients with total submuscular coverage of the implant, meaning the entire muscle covers the implant, but more often the muscle has slid up so that the implant actually is not covered by any muscle on the bottom portion, either at the level of the nipple or below. This is called a dual plane, meaning the implant is in some under the plane of the muscle and in other areas under the plane of just the breast gland. This is the most common placement for breast implants today. So most patients tell me their implants under the muscle. The reality is it's most likely in a dual plane or it's above the muscle and a subglandular implant. So a subglandular implant above the muscle, you just have the breast parenchyma and you don't lift the muscle up. There are advantages and disadvantages of each of these implant placements. The major disadvantage of being under the muscle is when patients flex their muscles, the implant will almost always move to some degree, sometimes more than others, sometimes less. The other disadvantage of being under the muscle is that you can have some more pain because the muscle has to be lifted. It's usually temporary, but sometimes can be long lasting. The disadvantage of being above the muscle or below the gland is that you can see the implant edge more often. There's a higher risk of rippling that can be seen throughout. If you look at this dual plane implant, you might see some rippling at the bottom, specifically on the side patients say when they lean over, but you won't see it as much on top versus a subglandular implant above the muscle has a higher risk of rippling that could be visible on top where things could be seen in a bikini or bathing suit or a dress. The other thing that I tried to diagram in this photo is the blue we're calling our breast implant, could be silicone saline. The green is the scar tissue that forms around, whether you're above or below, scar tissue forms around the implant, it's the body's natural process. Could be any implant, could be a chin implant, could be a knee replacement, and, and that we call the capsule. Okay, so the scar surrounding the implant is the capsule. Your body encapsulates the breast implant in scar. So that's our capsule. And that capsule typically in the beginning is thin and soft. Okay, it's, it feels almost like the consistency of a grape skin. We expect over time, some patients it's 10 years, some patients it's 20 years, that that capsule is gonna thicken and get harder. And even with more time, it usually calcifies and, and becomes almost an eggshell consistency. We expect that. I, I can't uh, think of a patient that I've seen with breast implants that are over 30 years old. We do get a fair number of those patients whose implants are 30 plus years. And I can't think of one that didn't have some degree of calcification or firmness to the capsule. So it's expected with time for patients to have a firm or hard capsule. But everyone's different. Some people it's 10 years, some people it's 20 years. That's why we say this is the most common reason is that capsule thickening and what it causes to the breast implant that patients have to get revision breast surgery. That being said, sometimes patients will get capsular contracture where that capsule squeezes the implant and either makes it look funny, makes it hurt, or pulls it into a position that we don't like. And that can happen even early after surgery, within a year, two to three years, and we call that early capsular contracture. And some people estimate that happens in as high as 12 to 20%. Other estimates are lower, but it's something that patients need to know because it's very good to go on the FDA's uh, site and look up breast implants. 
these are not considered permanent devices. Every young lady and, and every older lady that comes in and wants breast implants or breast implant replacement in this office, we explain to them, this is not gonna be your last surgery. You will need another surgery to revise or replace or remove these breast implants.